Hey guys, what's going on? This is Kalado, and I wanted to talk about a really common question that we get in the world of capoeira, which is, is capoeira a legit martial art? Is it something like boxing or jiu-jitsu that you can use for your own personal self-defense? The question uh, doesn't really have a really straightforward answer, honestly, I would say. And it seems as though a lot of people are trying to figure out what the answer to this question is. And Ramsey Dewey is uh, a YouTuber who has basically asked that question. He says, well, from what I understand, that there are seven techniques that can be used um, in capoeira and transferred into MMA. So the seven techniques that Ramsey Dewey talks about is melo de compasso, queixada, au, negativa, martelo no chão, chapa de angola, and negaça. So I don't know exactly which school uh, Ramsey Dewey trained with, but Capoeira schools vary a lot in what they teach and how much martial arts they apply into their school and their teaching and their techniques. I wanted to talk a little bit about each technique and frame it from my viewpoint and then try to understand it from his viewpoint. So it's, I thought it was very interesting to see Ramsey Dewey talking about Capoeira because it is a martial art that we have seen in, in uh, the UFC a couple times now. Uh, we've, we've seen different capoeira champions go into the UFC and apply some of their techniques in the octagon. Uh, we have Marcus Aurelius, we have Andre Guzmão, and a few other martial artists who trained capoeira and then also applied it to mixed martial arts to various degrees of success, I would say. So now the question is, can we apply these techniques on a greater scale? Can, will they be utilized by more and more mixed martial artists in the future? Is that something that we're going to see? I don't know, but uh, Ramsey Dewey has some ideas about what techniques could and can be used. So the first technique that Ramsey goes over is Mei Luch and this is uh, this makes a lot of sense because we've seen a few knockouts from this kick. It's proven to be a very deadly kick. If you hit somebody with it, they're basically out. There's so much momentum and power that goes into it, it would be hard to think of anyone who would be able to withstand uh, a hit like this to the face. I don't really see it happening. It seems impossible. But who knows? Uh, the way that Ramsey does actually use it though is what is interesting to me. Not so much that he chose it, but the way he uses it. And the way that he uses it is one, in combination with some sort of, you know, distraction or setup. He'll maybe jab once or twice, and then he'll set up the kick. And the other thing that's interesting about it is the way he uses the kick. Most of the, the times we've seen Mei Luj Compasso being used, it's used to charge forward. We've used it to charge forward at the opponent, to step forward and then throw the kick, which makes a lot of sense because a lot of times when a big movement is happening, you see a lot of uh, martial artists back away as an instinct to say like, oh, I don't know what's happening. I'm gonna back away, get some distance so I can um, get my bearings and hopefully avoid whatever's coming at me. What Ramsey Dewey is doing is he's getting very, very close. He's stepping very, very big diagonally and he's aiming the kick that way. Now, to me, when I see that, it's just way too close. Like, you would just never do that in a Capoeira game. But for him, it seems to make sense. And I wonder if that's something that we'll kind of see in the future is Mei Luj Compasso done that a much closer distance than what we're usually seeing. The last thing that Ramsey mentions about Mei Luj Compasso is because you're changing levels, that is because you're going from up high to down low with the kick, you're bringing your chest or your, your upper body down, you have the ability to go for a single leg or a double leg after the kick. And this is something that I've never seen done. And I wouldn't be interested to see someone try to apply this sort of thing. It might be difficult with the amount of momentum that's going into the kick, and because most people aren't doing it so close, it mm, you might be a little bit far away. But it's an interesting concept. I, we would have to see it. And like many other techniques, no one will consider it legit until it actually happens. The second technique that Ramsey uses was really surprising to me. It was queixada. And queixada is just not something that most capoeiristas would think about using in a real martial art bout. And the reason is because of the way the kick is thrown. It seems very awkward, but in fact, it seems like uh, this is something that can legitimately, legitimately be used. Ramsey points to fights that he's seen where this type of kick was seen in clinch 
situation. So you're in a clinch with somebody, you're up close, and then you bring the foot on a, to the inside, going out, targeting the chin. And if you're flexible enough, this seems to make sense. You could feasibly hit somebody with the outside step of your foot and hit their chin. So this is something that can be used apparently. And uh, although Ramsey calls it armada without a twist, it's it's called queixada. The third technique that Ramsey goes over is awu. And awu is a cartwheel. It's just a regular cartwheel. You can do cartwheels in many, many, many different ways. There's tons of variations. And the way Ramsey uses it, or the way he talks about it is, you can use it in two ways. You can use it as an attack, which we have seen cartwheels being used as an attack. Um, it's not that crazy to think about, you know, you have these legs flying at you at God knows how fast. It can be very scary for somebody who's never seen that before. But the other way that he uses it, which I thought was interesting, was to pass guard. You do the cartwheel by placing one hand on the mat close to the other person's hip and the other one square on their chest. And as you go over, you'd literally be going over their guard and be able to get some sort of side control or something like that. The reason I thought this was very interesting is because I never thought about capoeira techniques as being useful in the grappling situation. There is no grappling in capoeira. Or there is, but it's very, very limited. It's very limited as compared to judo or jujitsu. It's not that comprehensive. So the fact that he thinks about it in this way I thought was very interesting. He literally goes over somebody's guard using a car wheel, and although I've never seen this before, I could definitely see it being used. There's a lot of jujitsu practitioners who use more acrobatic or just athletic in general movements, uh, wrestlers as well, to reposition themselves in a way that works. Like we've seen some wrestlers do backflips to avoid getting sweeped. It's all possible, it's just a matter of how we apply it, it looks like to me. Martello Nouchon would have essentially be as a roundhouse kick uh, from the ground. Now this might make might not make a lot of sense, but essentially what you're doing is propping yourself up with one of your legs, one of your hands, and then the free leg would be the one that's kicking. A lot of the force is gonna be coming from your hip as the leg posted on the ground will be pushing off the floor. The other leg will come around for the kick. And you can very easily kick someone in the head with this. You don't really need to be very flexible. Um, it's something that reaches really well, so it, it does have its uses. And according to Ramsey, this has been seen before, and although I haven't seen it myself, uh, he does mention about where this was a technique that was used, and it came off as very surprising to the people who saw it, the commentators. But it is something that is seen a lot in Capoeira. You can go from basically a sitting position and counterattack with a very high kick. The fifth technique that Ramsey talks about is Chapa de Angola, and uh, he calls uh, Angola, which is a style of capoeira, the, the more African version of capoeira, which I thought was funny. <laughs> so people who, who do capoeira would probably laugh at something like that. It's just a funny way of saying it. Uh, but I thought it was interesting that he included it. I really didn't think that, and I even when I see it, it just doesn't look like a applicable attack. Uh, in capoeira, I'm sure we wouldn't really think about using this too much. I would much rather use something like Meluch Compasso, which has basically the same setup and way more power behind it. Uh, this is something that I didn't understand, and it's kind of like one of those things where I, I will not understand it until someone shows me how practical it can be. And I hope I'm wrong, because it would be cool to see different. Just like with anything else, it'd be cool to see the inclusion of more techniques and styles in uh, mixed martial arts. So again, similar to Meluj Compasso, where you have the idea of combining an attack with some groundwork, uh, with some grappling, uh, Ramsey really threw me off with this one when he uses um, Negachiva as a way to grapple with somebody. And he actually references uh, this as being very similar to another wrestling technique. So Negachiva is basically a uh, you can think about it like a starting position for a lot of ground movements in capoeira. It's a very foundational sort of setup for many attacks or movements. And the way Ramsey talks about it is when you're grappling with somebody, you can use Negachiva to go under them. And when he uses it as well, it, it makes a lot of sense. Although we would never use it in that way in capoeira because we don't have that wrestling element, it makes a lot of sense actually the way he uses it. 
to get around somebody to go for their legs or to try to get behind them I thought that was very interesting and I would actually love to see someone try to implement something like this the seventh technique is Nagasa and Nagasa is essentially you starting from like a horse stance kind of thing and you just having your upper body here rocking back and forth with your hands up and he basically compares this to uh, wrestling and uh, where wrestlers will be propped up here um, they will have their hands out it's very typical sort of wrestlers base um, just that in capoeira it's a lot lower it was a very natural movement that he says oh well this is what wrestlers do and in capoeira we we use it maybe for the same reasons because it's a very guarded stance because you're very closed when you do negasa you're just in a horse stance and then you close off your body so that if there is an attack you can react to it quickly and uh, it is something that people will use so to wrap up what did i think about uh, ramsey's video i thought it was very very interesting i would love to see more people exploring these things we've seen martial artists explore techniques from martial arts that people would say are just not legit like karate taekwondo capoeira we've seen techniques from all these martial arts being used and to great effect in some cases. Now that's not always gonna be the case. It's not that 100% of the techniques in capoeira are gonna be useful in, in MMA. It's probably not the case, but you don't necessarily need it to be the case either. You just need to know what works and how to apply it within a fighting situation. And to answer the question of, is capoeira a legit martial art? Capoeira has already gone through this stage before actually. Very interestingly, in the 1920s and 30s, there was a man who was very famous in the world of capoeira called Mestri Bimba. And Mestri Bimba developed a style of capoeira that was supposed to be an effective form of martial art. That's the reason he created Capoeira Regional, which he didn't call it that at the time, um, but that's essentially what it developed. And the idea was that capoeira was too soft, it was too... It was too much of a folkloric dance. A lot of the techniques that he taught had to deal, had to do with knife defenses, had to do with grappling, a lot more sweeps, and just heavy impact blows, some more hand strikes as well. And this was something that was very rare at the time. He used these techniques to great effect. He would have a lot of bouts with different martial artists, and his students would go on to have bouts with many martial artists, including people in jiu-jitsu for example, uh, judo, karate, all these different martial arts who would be in Brazil at the time, they would have their bouts and uh, capoeira would win from time to time and that was just part of the ecosystem of, of fighting back in that day. Thanks again to Ramsey Dewey, I thought that was very very interesting, the, the discussion and I hope that people keep discussing this, I hope people keep exploring, asking questions and attempting to find answers. So I hope you guys liked this video and if you did, you know, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and stay tuned for future content.